Stay tuned for Air Gun Detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and today we're going to take the mystery out of the Barra 1100Z PCP rifle. They make this both in .177 caliber and .22 caliber, and it comes in two different stock finishes. You've either got the camo or you have the black. But anyway, before we get into this, do me a favor, if you hadn't already, please hit that subscribe button down in the corner. It won't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel, and I would greatly appreciate that. Also, if you have the opportunity, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I got t-shirts, I've got hats, I got my Generation 2 bipods, and I also have a very limited number of compact scopes, these pretty cool compact scopes. I got a really good deal on them, but go to the website and check that out. Those are going really quick. All right, let's get back to our Barra here. I just want to show you guys what comes in the box. So let's uh, open this up here. So obviously we got our rifle in here. And in addition to that, we've got two magazines and two single shot trays and a few wrenches. And I'll show you all the applications to that stuff in a minute here. But let's get the rifle out of here. You're also going to get, as you guys know, you're going to get a, a manual, product manual. Let's get this out of the way. And let's get this out of the bag. This is really a good looking rifle in my opinion. There we go. All right. Oh, we need to display this. Hold on a second here. I got something. What's great is it comes with a Picatinny rail. Doesn't come with the bipods, but we can throw these on real quick. And there we go. It makes a nice little display. It really does. All right, so this is our bear. I'm gonna show you this side of it, and then we'll flip it around. We'll show you this side of it, just so you can see it. But let's talk about all the features this has. This one's actually in 22 caliber. As I said before, it comes in the .177 and the 22. It comes with a full one-year warranty. It uh, has a fill pressure of 3,000 PSI, and the tank is 150 cc's. PCP, for those you don't know, pre-charge pneumatic. So you need an outside air source for this gun. Whether it be, they have a, a similar to a bicycle pump that you can, a hand pump you can pump these up with. They have electric pumps, and then you can have scuba tanks, things of that nature. But this is a 3000 PSI fill, which is nice. And this has a standard Foster fitting right here on the end. Let's get this off. It's just a little snug there. But as you can see, your standard foster fitting, which is great because then you don't need a probe or anything like that. You just can just use the standard foster fitting and you're good to go. Just twist that back on there. There you go. All right, let's talk about uh, some of the features on it. As I just said, 3000 PSI fill. It has a fully adjustable trigger and the trigger group here look, might look a little familiar to you. It's the same trigger they put on a lot of B-mins and Umarex uses them and a few other people do. But Barra did a couple special things to it and I'll get into that in the conclusion. But I want to talk about the special things they did with that trigger. This is a fully shrouded barrel and it comes with a built-in air stripper. And what's really nice, it also has our half by 20 thread here. So if you want to put a suppressor on here, and don't forget about our buddy Terry Buckrell out of Texas. He makes suppressors for these and they're not going to break the bank. I mean seriously, they're in the $20, $25 range. But he makes great suppressors and then just, this would just thread right on there. The, the rifle itself is relatively quiet, but I mean if you want to make it whisper quiet, you have that option, which is nice. So they just put this on there. You don't need any special adapter. It's the, staff, the standard half by 20. So that's great. The barrel itself is 19 inches long. The overall gun itself is 42, a little over 42 inches. I think it's 42 and a quarter. It's got a very large cocking lever on it, which is nice. So it's easy to grip, easy to flip that up, easy to control. Yeah, the rifle can be decocked just like some of the others. It's got a very positive locking. When it locks forward, you can just feel it really snap in. Which also nice is the bolt here. As you can see this, there's no O-ring on it. 
So it's nice and smooth and it seals really tight into the breech. And that's what you'll find in some of your more expensive um, PCP type rifles. It does come with the two 10 shot rotary magazines. And let me show you real quick, I'm gonna show you real quick. These are the really good magazines because I'm gonna show you how you can uh, load these. But check this out. So you got your magazine here. What's nice about these, you don't have to twist them around and you know the cover, twist it around and put one in backwards, no. You just load it just like it is, just like this. You drop a pellet in and then rotate it. And then you'll rotate it and then go to the next one. And then once again, you rotate it and go to the next one until it's full. So if you need to top this off, let's say you shot a few shots and you're, you're hunting, you want to just top it off, it's easy. You don't have to pull all the pellets out of it and unload it to reload it. You just add a few. So this just easily rotates. And what's really nice about these magazines, check this out right here on the side, is the shot count. So you're not struggling to see how many shots you have left. So when you put your magazine in, and it slides in very easy, there's nothing to it, just like that. So now you have your shot count right there on the side, which is kind of nice. All right. Anyway, so you also have a sling attachment, which is right here in the back. And then you would obviously put an adapter because it comes with this Picatinny rail, which is great. So you have the Picatinny rail here, which you can put a sling adapter on. You can put any type of other accessory on there, which is kind of nice. So you also have on this, which is really great, is you got a fully adjustable hammer spring. And you guys can see right here, and it comes with a wrench. And in the conclusion, I'm gonna show you how you adjust the hammer spring. We can do some various tunes on this, and it'll take maybe 60 seconds that you can do this. It's that simple, I'm gonna show you. So the gun itself weighs about seven and a half pounds. The stock on this is phenomenal. It it's so solid. It's honestly probably one of the most solid synthetic so stocks that I've came across. And then you also have an adjustable cheek rest, which this is nice and simple like that. And you just tighten it up to whatever you're liking. Now there is no, obviously like most PCPs, there's no um, open sights on this. So you're gonna have to put an optic on here. In fact, I use the compact scope that I've got a few that I'm selling on the website. I use that on here, it worked fantastic. And we'll show you that when we go through the process. So they're claiming you can get up to um, a thousand feet per second. And that's probably with a lighter pellet with a hammer spring all the way in. But we're gonna go through and we're gonna test this through all of our usual steps. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. All right, let's test out our 1100Z for velocity. And you know, there's a variation on power on this. You can set the hammer spring. Right now I have it set for hunting, so we're gonna get more power out of it. I'll show you at the end of the video uh, the different adjustments on the hammer spring to you know whatever style shooting that you're gonna do. But we're gonna test the field target trophies. They're a 14.66 grain pellet. And then I'm gonna tell you how the Barracuda 15s do. They're actually a, almost a 16 grain pellet, but I'll tell you what the velocity was like on that. So let's shoot five shots, average it out, get your foot pounds of energy here. All right, shot number one 971. Shot number two 969. Shot number three 974. Shot number four, 966, and shot number five, 964. And I'll chart this entire thing out for you uh, during the conclusion. Show you about how many shots you're gonna get per fill, depending on where your hammer spring's set. But anyway, the Barracuda 15s, is there a 15.89 uh, grain pellet? You get a little bit more foot-pounds of energy down range on them. But they average right around 948 uh, feet per second, right in that mid-range there. And uh, with that, that's what, just about 32 foot-pounds of energy, so not too shabby. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, guys, we're going to test out our Bear 1100Z for some uh, accuracy. Where I like, I like to do with most of the PCP rifles is push them out to about 40 yards. It's about the best I can accommodate here on the property. But we're going to go ahead and use the splatter burst targets. These are four inch targets. They're pretty cool. They come in a roll now. 
but I'll leave a link for you guys below. But I love the fact that we can clearly see our impact points. We're going to be shooting the uh, JSP Exacts. These are 18.13 grain. Seem to like the little heavier pellets at the greater distance. We've got a little breeze going on today as well. So we're 40 yards back. Go ahead and take a quick look, and then we'll go ahead and shoot. All right, let's see how well we group. One more. You gotta love that group. I'd say that's pretty amazing myself. Anyway, from 40 yards back. But check that out. Heck of a group. A little win. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test the trigger on our 1100. And I gotta tell you guys up front, triggers are incredible on these. They might look a little familiar. They're similar to the Beeman trigger. Or in some of their rifles, the CO2 rifles, and uh, a couple of the others. But it's amazing. There's one little adjustment on it. You can adjust the tension on it, but it really is a great trigger. So let's see how well. I have this one set pretty light, so let's see how well it does. All right. Got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge. Let's see how well we do. All right. I got that set at 8.6 ounces. Told you how to set it light. But what's great is you can. You can go to five pounds all the way down to even probably lower than the eight ounces. But for the target shooting that I'm doing, that's exactly where I wanted the trigger. All right, let's move on to the next segment. My favorite portion, every review, as you guys know, plinking. So we're going to go ahead and shoot. We shot the JSBs, the 18.13s, uh, uh, during our accuracy test. So I thought it would be fair to shoot the Barracuda 18s. The H and N's, just to mix it up here, they're an 18.13, and it virtually shoots roughly about the same. So we got uh, five targets up there. We're a little over 40 yards back. Go ahead and take a quick look. See a couple eggs, shotgun shells, and a pellet can. All right, let's try to knock those down and see how we do. All right, try the shotgun shell on the right side first. That's definitely a hit. And the next one. Whoa. And that's a hit. And how about a steel egg? God, this thing hits good. It really does hit hard. You can totally feel it. And the next egg. Wow. And let's just center punch that pellet can. Gotta love it. There you go, guys. <laughs> Your Bear 1100. Tough to beat. And I have this set, um, I have this set for hunting. So the hammer springs in eight turns. But I'm gonna go over that here in the next segment on our conclusion. So stay tuned for the next segment. Let's wrap this up with our conclusion. How did our Bear 1100Z do? Well, you guys tell me. I personally thought it did fantastic. I mean, for an entry-level PCP, and keep in mind, the camo stock one runs for about $300 retail, and if you want just the plain black stock, that runs about $275. So it's about $25 difference if you want to upgrade to the, the fancier camouflage stock. But So you're like between that $275, $300 price range. So, you know, I was really trying to come up with some negatives, and I'll be honest with you guys, I cannot come up with negatives with this, not for an entry-level PCP. So, let's jump right into the positives. Positive number one, I just covered it, good price. Uh, number two, it comes with two magazines, and these are the good magazines, and then it comes with the two single-shot trays, too, as well, which is kind of nice. Those are if you like to shoot... Um, you know, just single shot. So you got a solid stock, as I talked about before, I really emphasize. I love the fact that you have the adjustable cheek rest, that this can be adjusted to whatever level. It's really, 
simple. I like the fact that you have a barrel band built into this. There's a barrel band right into it. It's nothing you have to have afterwards. So they thought about that ahead of time. They also have the Picatinny rail. So if you want to set up your bipod on it, you're good to go. But let's talk a little bit about one really cool thing on this is the hammer spring adjustment. Okay, so they thought a lot. Let me flip this around so you guys can see this up a little better here. Okay, so we've got our hammer spring right back here. And the way you're going to adjust this, they give you a, a nice Allen wrench for this. But you're going to have three basic adjustments and you need to start from zero. And zero is very simple. You just take the hammer spring and you're going to stick the wrench in there and you're going to back this bolt out, which controls the tension on your spring. Just back it all the way out until it's, until it's flush, until it's absolutely flush, just like this. So you guys can see that. So it's flush right here. So you want it nice and even. That will give you your zero point. And then from there, you're going to go inward. And for instance, the first tune you'd want to do is if you're one of those guys that are a hand pumper, you got to pump this up by hand. You can actually just do one full rotation, which would be simple. It's just, let's just say you start at 12 o'clock and you just rotate it around one time, just like that. One rotation is going to give you at a 1900 PSI fill. So you won't have to pump it all the way up to 3000 PSI. Just pump it up to 1900 PSI. You're going to get four full magazines. means you're going to get about 40 shots out of it. And it's going to be good for backyard plinking, about 25 yards. That, that's going to be that um, tune is going to be specifically set up for that. So if we want to go a little bit more advanced, we want to kind of get a halfway in between. We want a little bit more power, but we want a decent shot count. So we're going to do six turns. So that's simple as turning this wrench six times. So starting at zero, we rotate the wrench all the way around and we do it six times. So you just count that six times. Okay, that's going to give you around 26 foot pounds of energy and you're going to get about three mags. So you're going to get about 30 shots. Now, where we tested it, where I showed you this, we did eight turns, okay? Eight turns will get up to, you know, 30, 31 foot pounds of energy and you're going to get two full magazines. But what I did is I charted this from shot number one all the way through to shot about shot number 25. So you're going to get about 20 really good shots. But go ahead and look at this chart. So between shot number one and shot number 20, we averaged 928 feet per second. That is with a 14.66 grain pellet. And we also got about 28 foot pounds. So that's the average from our starting point all the way down. That's what we average, which is not bad at all. So this rifle is very versatile with that adjustable hammer spring. So whatever your type of shooting is, it's going to fit that. Whether you like to shoot in the backyard or go hunting, you have those options, which is great. Another thing I want to mention that's a positive, you'll find this a lot in the non-regulated PCPs, you get that ping sound. Fortunately, this rifle does not have that whatsoever. It's nice and quiet, no pinging, which is really cool. And I like the fact this has a 3000 PSI fill and it has the standard Foster fitting. So we're getting great power and honestly, some really good accuracy. Guys, you saw my target, here's a reminder, but you saw my target, it was phenomenal. And now I wanna get into one other thing specific to this gun and I touched on it before. It's the trigger. This trigger is fully adjustable and Barra did something that none of the other manufacturers have done. That includes Beeman and Umarex. You'll find the same trigger setup as on the Umarex gauntlet, if you didn't know, on all their Umarex gauntlet models. So Umarex is using them, a Beeman uses them, and now Barra is using them, but they did something special. If you'll notice the trigger blade here, their trigger blade is very unique to this rifle. In fact, it flexes because this is technically a single stage trigger. So you pull it, it's supposed to go off. Boom, just like that. Well, Bearer created a first stage just with the trigger blade. So it's spring loaded. So in other words, you see that little flex in the trigger? That's designed so when you put your finger on the trigger, you can actually pull it up. You take up that slack, that little flex. So it's giving you a first stage and then you hit a wall and then a little bit more pressure, you know the trigger is going to go off. So it's absolutely predictable. But so they took a single stage trigger and created a first stage in it, which is great. But let's talk about how you adjust this trigger real quick. The first thing you're going to have to do is you got to take the stock um, 
apart from the assembly. And the way you do that is you have to take the safety out first. So put, put the gun on safe. Make sure the gun is actually flipped onto the safe position. And once it's in the safe position, you're going to take a punch and you're just going to push out the safety and it's spring loaded. So you're going to have to put it back in the same way and you'll probably have to get a small screwdriver and push the spring mechanism down so you can slide the um, trigger, we'll call it the uh, safety bolt back in. But anyway, that needs to come out and then there's two screws on the bottom, two Allen screws that have to come loose. These have to come loose and then the, the stock assembly will come off. Okay, once that comes off, here's your trigger, voila. All right, and looking closely into the trigger, you have three adjustments. A is gonna be your sear engagement. So if you want a very short throw and, and you want that just a very short length of pull when you're pulling the trigger, that's what you would adjust with your sear engagement. Okay, you don't wanna adjust it too far because you don't want the, to slip or if you bump the rifle, you don't want it to go off. So you need to be cautious with that. B is your over travel. So when you're pulling the trigger, if the trigger goes off, I'm one of those, when my trigger goes off, I don't like a mile of distance after you're pulling that trigger, okay? I like when you pull the trigger, that's it, and it hits a wall. Well, that's what um, screw B does. You adjust that, so just after you fire the trigger, then it hits the wall and stops. And then C, which is the easiest adjustment, you don't even have to mess with the other stuff if you don't want to, but that creates um, spring tension. So if you back that bolt out, it will lessen the spring tension and make your pull much lighter. Your trigger pull is going to be much lighter. So you can fine tune this to exactly the way you like it. And you can obviously polish it too if you like, if you want to polish the contact points. Like I said, this is a pretty universal trigger, but I really like the fact that Barra put that flexible trigger blade in there, giving you what resembles a first stage. So you have a what appears to be a two-stage trigger when in reality it's only a single-stage trigger. But anyway, good job on that, guys. You did a great job. Anyway, so that's, that's kind of the inner workings of the trigger. So if you kind of want to get deeper into it, um, you can. It's, it's not that difficult. So overall, this rifle is pretty awesome. I do have to say, especially for an entry-level PCP rifle under that well, right at that $300, $275 range. It's tough to find a better PCP. And I really like the bonus of the half by 20 on this. That's fantastic, because if you want to put a suppressor on that, I'll leave a link for uh, Terry at Buck Rail. These guys work really well, and they're totally affordable. I'm telling you, to your door, it's going to be under 30 bucks. Where can you get a suppressor for that? But anyway, I'll leave you a link for that. But anyway... With that, overall, this is a five-star gun. I'm going to have to rate it five stars, without a doubt. I mean, where are you going to find a better PCP rifle, an entry-level PCP rifle for that price? It's going to be very difficult. It really is. Well, with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. I hope you and your families are doing well. You're getting lots of shooting in. Until next time, take care and God bless.